Uh, those of you in the sanctuary, those of you that are online, we're thankful for you, amen, for joining us in this moment. I believe that is not by accident, but by divine appointment that you are here today, even if you happen upon this by accident. I believe that it is a divine accident that has brought you to this place in this moment, amen, to hear what we say in the Lord, amen, we believe that there is a word from the Lord for the people of God on today. And then, so if you would go with me to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Be reading from the New Living Translation on this morning. It says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the things he planned for us long ago. I'll read that one more time. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. I like to use for a topic today. I am God's masterpiece. Come on, can you put your hands on yourself and just say, I am God's masterpiece? Come on, type it in the comments today and let somebody know, I am God's masterpiece. That when you look at me, you're looking at a one of a kind creation. I am a masterpiece, and He has created us anew. So we can do the good things. Tell somebody, there's some good things you got to do. There's some good things that he has ordained for your life that you are going to do. And all you've got to do is realize who you are. Tell somebody, do you realize who you are? Come on, say it with your chest. Do you realize who you are? A masterpiece is a consummate example of skill or excellence of any kind. In the art world, there are certain pieces that we identify as masterpieces. Leonardo da Vinci has the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper. Michelangelo has the creation of Adam, which is a famous painting that is on the, Sistine, on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. There's the Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. And then in the architectural world, there are things that we look at and we think them as masterpieces. There's the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. There's the Sydney Opera House. There's a Tower of Pisa in Italy and the Taj Mahal in India that we look at and we say, wow, that was some masterful work. When you create a masterpiece, it sets the benchmark to what everything else is held to. It sets a standard so that when you look at it, it don't look ordinary. It don't look like everything else. But when you look at a masterpiece, there is something in its design that stands out. Tell somebody, there's something about me that stands out. A masterpiece is created by someone who is skillfully gifted and has perfected their skill and created something that others look to, as I said, as the benchmark. People come from far and wide to see the masterpiece. There are people that pay good money just to walk into a museum and see a portrait hanging on the wall. They don't get a chance to touch it. They don't get a chance to hold it in their hands. They don't get to meet the person that created it. But all they want to do is just take a look at what's created. There's some architectural things that people just want to stand in front of and take pictures or, or bring their cameras out and just take pictures. Sometimes they don't even go in. They just want to be on the outside and take a picture and say I was there I saw it with my own eyes I witnessed it with my own eyes in the natural world the works that are identified as masterpieces are limited in number and the creators may have one or two max if you're lucky you may have three things that you've created that's a masterpiece everything that an artist creates Everything that's built is not considered a masterpiece. 
It is limited. That's why it's so special in its scope because everything is not deemed a masterpiece in the natural. However, we serve a Lord who's able to make all of us a masterpiece. He's not limited in his creativity. He's not limited in his scope. And everything he does is excellent. Listen, when you look at yourself, you got to see excellence. You got to look at yourself and say, I'm one of a kind. I'm one of one. God thought enough of me to make me, to breathe into me, to invest in me what he wanted to invest in me. Uh, people are coming from far and wide just to see you. I wish I believed it, that what's inside of you, what God has created you to be, there are folks that just want to be in your presence. They're going to want to be around you. They're going to want to uh, uh, read your book. They're going to want to patronize your business. Why? Because what you have inside of you, what you have created, what's been created through you is God's masterpiece. That when you play the instruments, I'm not just a regular musician, but I am a masterpiece that has been designed by God and can't nobody play like me. I don't care how well you play, how many degrees you have. Uh, nobody can do it like me. Tell somebody, nobody can do it like me. And nobody, come on, say it, ain't nobody can do it like you. God has created you a masterpiece. You're a unique masterpiece. When we look at the heavens and the earth and all of its splendor all you can do is sit back and say that's a masterpiece when you look at how the sun sets and how the sun rises and the stars in the sky and every now and then you see what's a shooting star you'll say that's a miracle and that's a masterpiece when you go in the garden and see the flowers blooming and the fragrance that comes from them you can't help but declare that's a masterpiece even when the seasons change and the leaves begin to change colors, there's not an artist like God who can make the reds red and the browns brown and the yellows yellow and cause them to come together to create a masterpiece. And in the fall, you see the leaves and the sunset and it comes together that you just want to take a picture and revel in the masterpiece that God has created. It was not man's hand. Man, no man could create it, but God created a masterpiece. And we bless him for the masterpiece. Then look at how he clothed the lily. Look at the grass. Look at the sparrow. The sparrow doesn't have to walk for anything. When you look at the fowls of the air, there's all kind of different species. If you go into the ocean deep, there's all kind of animals in the ocean. Some of them we ain't even tapped into yet. It seems like every year we're discovering some new animal in the depth of the ocean that we've never seen before. That's how masterful God is that we still have not uncovered all all of his works we've only cracked the surface of what's in this universe we've only cracked the surface of what's in the earth realm and what's in the heavenlies but we know that God is a master in what he does he's a master and there's splendor so when you look at yourself you have to see what God created go with me to Genesis 1 and 26 through 28, if you don't believe me. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. It says this, and God said, let us make man in what? Our image and after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the flesh of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and all of the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And God said, let us make man in our image. Oh, excuse me. And so 27. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created them him. And then verse 28 says this. And God blessed them. Tell somebody, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful 
and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth on the earth. Tell somebody, not only am I made in the image of God, but I also got dominion and I'm blessed. It said he made us. And then after he made us, he blessed us. It's one thing to make you. But he said, I'm not only going to make you, I'm going to bless you. And in the blessing, I'm going to cause you to be fruitful and multiply. I'm going to cause you to duplicate yourself in the earth. Just as I have made you, I'm putting something inside of you. That there's something unique that's going to come out of you. Don't you know that what God has put inside of you, the world needs it, the earth needs it. There's a seed inside of you that is growing now. There's some fruit inside of you. God said be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth. We ought to leave this earth better than when we came in. There ought to be some evidence that you were here. There ought to be some evidence in your fruit and your labor that you were here. There ought to be some signs of the masterpiece that you were in the earth after you out of here. He says you don't have dominion over everything in the earth and sea. That's a lot of responsibility. But he thought enough of you and who he created to say, I'm going to bless you and give you power. <laughs> I'm going to create you, bless you, and then give you authority. I'm going to create you, bless you, and give you some keys that nothing in this earth is greater than you. It's going to have dominion over you, but you can subdue it under your feet. You have authority. Why are you letting things in the earth knock you down? Why are you letting things in the earth just try to destroy you? Why are you listening to things that are not of God? When God said, I created you and I blessed you and I've given you authority, you start. You ought to start using your authority. And when the devil starts talking, talk back. Talk to me, I talk back. Uh, whatever you got to say, I'm going to put some word on it. I'm going to put some faith behind it. You walked up on the wrong one. But I realized that God made me. And not only did he make me, he blessed me and he gave me authority. Your authority is false. You sell wolf tickets, but I have real authority that comes from God and his spirit. So when I enter a place, that's why when I enter a place, the atmosphere can change. That's why when I open my mouth, demons got to run. It's not about me, but it's the Holy Ghost inside of me. Don't get it twisted. Don't get beside yourself. Don't get your the beat in. Even though you are a masterpiece, you are just the creation, not the creator. And so many of us are worshiping the creation and not the creator. He says, I'm a jealous God. Listen, we ought to get to the point where we look at ourselves and say, I'm a masterpiece because you made me. That I give God the glory that when I look at myself, I say, man, you bad. But I'm bad because God did it. I, I overcame some things because God was on my side. I should have gave up a long time ago, but God's hand was on my life. I, I am somebody because God said it. That's why, that's why I'm a masterpiece. That's why I'm unique. That's why there's nobody else like me. Listen, the ministry that's inside of you, nobody can preach like you preach. I don't care how wonderful they preach, what stages they step on. No one can preach like you preach. No one can pray like you pray. No one can prophesy like you prophesy. Nobody can give like you give. Why? Because you are a masterpiece. And God has put something inside of you that's uniquely you. Stop comparing yourself to other folks. Stop comparing your ministry to other folks. Stop comparing your business to other folks. Stop comparing what God is doing in other folks to what he's doing in you. And walk in who God has made you to be. And 
when you don't see yourself as a masterpiece, when you don't recognize what God is doing, it is a slap and a disrespect to God. It is disrespectful to look at yourself with low self-esteem. It is disrespectful to God to say, I can't do it. I'm not equipped to do it when God said do it. It is a disrespect and it's disobedience when God says do it and you got a bunch of excuses on why you can't do it. If God said do it, then apparently you are equipped and you have what you need inside of you to do it. Tell somebody go ahead and do it. You are a masterpiece. And he designed you specifically for the work that's in front of you, the work that's in your hand, the idea that's in your mind. It has been distinctly created for you. I am a masterpiece. Somebody declare it again. You, with all your flaws, you with your imperfections, yes, you are a masterpiece. Yes, you, 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 you don't always have it together. Yes, you slip and fall every now and then. Yes, you get an attitude. Yes, your mouth gets the better of you. Yes, your attitude is something else, but you're still a masterpiece. And God is not finished working out in you what he's going to do in you. He's still chiseling away at the marble of your life. He's still sculpting you as clay. And when it's all said and done, I'm a masterpiece now, but I'm going to another level. He's restoring me. He's doing a new work in me. If you thought I was good then, wait till he finishes with me. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. And when he's done with me, I'm coming forth as gold. I'm coming out after I've gone through the fire, after the dregs have come out, and you've been able to skim off the imperfections that when I'm done, it's going to be perfect. I may look like coal right now, but coal serves a purpose. Coal has a work, but because of the pressure on my life, because of the things that have been weighing me down, you ain't seen nothing yet. You thought I was useful as coal, but wait till I come out of this pressure cooker. Wait till after I come out of this trial, I'm coming out bright, shining bright like a diamond. Does somebody shine bright? You think I'm all that now? Just wait. You trying to talk about me now? Just wait. Because if you're mad at me now, if you're offended by me now, wait till God finishes me. I ain't got to say nothing. I ain't got to do nothing. I ain't trying to show off. But I'm just going to walk in what God created me to be and what he created me to do. And I'm going to watch God's masterpiece at work. And folks are going to come from everywhere. Tell them they're coming from everywhere. To see the masterpiece that God has created you to be. There's folks that's, that's going to call on you because of the masterpiece that God has created you to be. There's going to be invitations to come to land and to go into places and industries because of the masterpiece that God created you to be. And he's going to place favor on your life because of the masterpiece that he has created you to be. You could not do it on your own, but rest in the master that's created you. Yes. Imperfect. Yes, flaws. You know how it is, and I'm almost done. There is no transparency like being one-on-one -on -one with your mirror. Just you in the mirror. And when it's just you in the mirror, can we have an honest moment? Most of the times, we start to pick apart what we see, the imperfections that we see. We don't see the miracle. We don't see the blessing that, we, that God created or the masterpiece, but we see the scars. But the scars are evidence that God healed you from something. That the, I, when I look in the mirror, I'm not looking at the scars uh, saying, man, I, I wish I looked better, but I got these scars. No, these scars are a testimony of where I've come through.
through. I got some battle wounds that show that I've been through some things and I'm still a masterpiece. We start looking at ourselves and start pointing out the imperfections. Man, if I could lose about 10 pounds, I wish I was this, I wish I was that. Man, if I get enough money, I might go and see the surgeon and try to do a little something because I need to lift here and tuck there. And what I'm saying, ladies, you should do that. I'm not, I'm not saying nothing's wrong with that. But here's what I'm saying. You got to see the perfection that's in you past your flaws. Past your imperfections, that if nothing about me changes, I'm still a masterpiece. That if nothing changes about me physically, I'm still a masterpiece. Listen, if we went around this room, most of us are, have little age on us, and we don't look like we did when we was 21 and 25. Some of us got a little bit of gray. Some of us have lost a little bit of hair. Some of us have picked up a little weight. Some of us don't have the same energy that we did. We used to be able to run and do everything that we used to be able to do, have an hour sleep, go to our job, and perform it well. But now, if you go to sleep by a certain time. When you wake up the next morning, you're groggy, you're barely making it, you need somebody to put some coffee in your veins. Time happens to all of us, but we are still a masterpiece. And as a matter of fact, sometimes the older you get, the more value that's placed on you, the more weathered it is, it's more value because it has gone through some things. It has endured the elements. It's endured hard times. It's endured some wars. They say this uh, valuable thing has gone through some wars. It's seen some earthquakes. It's seen some floods. So it may look like you don't have no value to it, but it got some value. Isn't it amazing how sometimes folks will pass over you and look past you because you will look a little weathered because you don't look polished but in the hands of God he'll start to wipe away every sin everything that has been on you and by the time he's done the revelation is wow this is a masterpiece and you about to take it to good will what's inside of you you about to sell it cheap because you don't understand the value of it. You don't understand what's inside of you. You don't understand who's sitting beside you. So you, with your greedy self, is happy because somebody giving you $100. And God said, no, what's inside of you, I'm causing it to bring hundreds of thousands and millions. Don't you understand the value of who you are? That you wonder and worried about five folks and, and I'm causing you to bring thousands into the kingdom of God but what are you doing with what's inside of you does the body masterpiece it's a sad thing to not know your own value it's one thing for other folks to discount you it's one, one thing for other folks to put the clearance tag on you it's, it's one thing for folks to sit you on the curb and say, whoever wants it, come by and get it. If you can load it in your truck, you can have it. It's one thing, but it's another thing for you to sit yourself on the curb. It's another thing to discount yourself. I'm not discounting myself. I'm not going on sale. I'm not going on clearance. But what's inside of me, I had to pay a price for. What's inside of you, you had to pay a price for, Apostle. And nobody's going to sell you cheap. No one's going to undercut you. This ain't the time to negotiate and bargain with what's inside of me. Either you going to give me the full value of what's inside of me and the gift and the anointing inside of me or you can keep walking. And it's not, it's not about, I'm not talking about money. But some folks will waste your time. They'll waste your resources. 
you, 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 you tell them and you give them the goodness that's inside of you out of your experience and the things that you've learned. You've, you've been educated in this area and folks will pull on you. I need to meet with you. Can we have a con Can you consult me? I need some help. And you'll spend hours pouring out and they'll do nothing with what you've given them. Wasted. Tell somebody I'm not wasting no oil. What's inside of me is too, it, too valuable for you to waste it. What's inside of me is too valuable for you to not re understand what's been deposited inside of you. If you knew who you was talking to, if you knew who you were in the presence of, if you knew my experience, listen, I am not saying that to boast of myself. It's just what the Lord has done. If you knew how long I had to sit, sit, study for this, if you knew how long I stayed up at night praying about this and fasting over this, then you would understand the cost that comes along with it. That I'm not just talking to somebody. I'm not just talking. Elder Hodges, I'm not, you're not just talking. You're not praying and prophesying for naught. Because it's glamorous. Because it looks well. And after this season, I'm speaking to you about after this season, there's a whole other level of anointing that's coming out of you and value that's coming out of you because of what you had to endure. And because you kept on, because you did not give up through tears, through disappointments, and because you chose to keep going and put your faith in God, your value just went up to somebody. Her value just went up. Yesterday's price is not today's price. I'm a masterpiece. Because God has created me that way. God designed me that way. And he told me <laughs> that I'm his masterpiece. Paul makes it clear. He says, listen, we are God's masterpiece. We're his handiwork. That when you see me, you see what God's able to do. That when you see me, you see the full totality of what he's able to do. Man, all of us, unique. All of us, different. But still the same. Same spirit in all of us. But there is something unique about each and every one of us and what you bring to the table and what you bring to the kingdom is necessary and needed. Don't devalue what God has called valuable. Don't discount what God has said is a masterpiece and you don't see it. You've got to see it even when you don't feel it. You got to know it, even when you don't feel it. Some days you wake up, you don't feel like a masterpiece. You say, I feel like I'm in shambles. But you got to declare, I am God's masterpiece. I'm not just a masterpiece. But I'm God's masterpiece. Did nobody else create me? Did nobody else anoint me? Did nobody else appoint me? Did nobody else deposit inside of me what's inside of me? I am God's. Masterpiece. Da Vinci could not do this. Michelangelo could not do this. The greatest architect could not do this. It took the hand and the handiwork of God to create me. And I am one of one. God made you on purpose for purpose. I'll say that one more time. God made you on purpose, for purpose. Not a mistake, but on purpose. Does not matter what the situation surrounds you coming into the earth. Tell somebody, I was made on purpose. I was created on purpose. And so since God made me on purpose, I've got to do his purpose. I may have had an identity crisis at times, 
But now I understand who I am. I understand I'm a masterpiece. I doubted myself in the past. I may have woke uh, in my teenage years trying to figure out some of us, trying to figure out who we were. And in our 20s, trying to figure out where we belonged and running with this crowd and that crowd, trying to find our identity. But our identity is in God. It's not in nobody else. It's not in a title. It's not in your bank account, but it's in God because God made you. And he said, not only did I make you, I've blessed you. And I've given you authority. You are, according to Psalms 139 and 14. We're going to pray. I will praise thee. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. So when you look at yourself, that ought to be enough to cause you to praise God right there and declare his works are marvelous. You ain't got to look outside of yourself, but when you look at yourself in the mirror, it ought to be enough to say, God, I praise you. God, I lift you up because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You did your thing when you made me. You did your good work. You did your good work when you created me. God, you were showing out when you created me. God, you know what? I just got to bless you because I don't even know what entered into your mind when you created me. But you was on something else. And you did a wonderful work when you created me. And because you created me, I'm going to give you glory. I'm going to give you the best I have. Because you made me so wonderful, I got to share this wonderfulness with the world. Not out of conceit. But just, just knowing, tell somebody, I know I'm God's masterpiece. I know who I am. I know who he made me. And I'm walking in the authority and the power in which he has given in unto me in the earth. So I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm made in his image. I'm made in his likeness. I can't help but be great. I can't, I can't help, help but to be beautiful. I can't help but to be wonderful. Flaws and all, he made me. And he created me. God, we thank you. God, we bless you that you have made us a masterpiece. That you fashioned us yourself. That you've made us a priceless work of art. That we are one of one. That out of all the millions and billions of people, that have inhabited this earth from the beginning to now. We are still one of one. So God, we thank you for making us a masterpiece. God, forgive us of the times when we looked at ourselves and we thought less of. The times that we beat ourselves up, that we pointed out every single flaw within us, every imperfection. That we pointed out, we spend so much time pointing out everything that we think is wrong with us. God forgive us. Help us to change our mindset and our outlook. Help us to change the way we see ourselves. That we'll see ourselves through the, your eyes. That we'll see ourselves the way that you see us. So God, we're thankful that you not only made us, but you blessed us. And not only did you bless us, but you gave us dominion in the earth. And we thank you. So we walk away from this place and this time in your presence with our head in our knowing that we are your masterpiece. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. If you don't mind, put those hands together and bless God for the word. Can you just testify one more time? I am God's masterpiece. Listen, there may be someone listening, uh, watching right now that ha may have had some uh, time where you did not see yourself the way that God saw you, the way that God created you, and it's caused you to go down a certain path. It's caused you to make certain decisions in your life because you didn't know how valuable you were, that you allowed other folks to discount you. But this is your moment, this is your time to come into the fold, to give him your entire life. 
If you give your entire life to Jesus Christ today, he will show you how valuable you are, how loved you are, how important you are. This is your moment. This is your time to accept him as Lord and Savior. All you got to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ that he's the son of God and you are saved. We believe that he who knew no sin took on sin for us, came and dwelt among us, was crucified for us on the cross, died for us, but he rose again with all power in his hand. And we believe that he's coming back again and we're living this life to live again, that when he comes back for us, we'll be ready. Don't let this moment pass and be unsure of your readiness. That you cannot have one foot in, one foot out, but decide to live for him completely and give him your whole life. You are a masterpiece. Let the master continue to work on you. Continue to chisel away at you. Continue to add color to your life. This is your moment. Some of us, uh, there's somebody that's listening or watching may have walked away and did your own thing because you didn't understand your value. You were in the church. You gave your life to Christ, but life happened. Pressure happened. But today is your day to come back into the fold. Jesus still loves you. He's there with open arms. All you have to do is come back and he'll accept you in. Listen, you need a place. You need a pastor. Be Restored Worship Center is a great place to connect, to grow, and to be. Listen, we want to pray for you and with you. We want to connect with you. We want to push you into purpose. It does not matter where you are in the world. You can be a part of this family. We are in this together. We are a bunch of masterpieces. Amen. We are an art gallery of God's great work. And all we need to do is, is add you to the collection as a testimony of what God is able to do. Amen. So you can uh, put it in the comments, send us an inbox if you're watching online. Uh, you can shoot us a message. Uh, you can go to our website, berestore.net, and you can put your prayer request in or let us know that you've accepted him as Lord and Savior today. Are you coming back? Amen. Into the kingdom of God. Amen. We uh, are so thankful for you and your life. Amen. And we believe God for souls that is sending souls. Amen. To the kingdom because we realize that the harvest is great. We see no lack of souls. Amen. The, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. But we thank God for this moment in here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Listen, this is a good time. Amen. To sow into the kingdom of God. If you have not given already your tithe, your offering, amen, you can do so now. Amen. Such as the Lord has blessed you. Amen. Give back unto him. Amen. We have multiple ways that you can give here at Be Restored Worship Center. You go to our website. Amen. Be Restored.net. The links go to the giving link and it will take you to giving. If you have a mobile app, we, if you don't have, we encourage you to get it. But if you have the mobile app, the Be Restored Worship Center mobile app, amen, you can give uh, through the app. It will take you to giving. Amen. Uh, we'll put the QR code on the screen. If you have Givelify, amen, look for Be Restored Worship Center, Lithia Springs, Georgia. Amen. And you can give there as well through the Givelify app. And we thank God for every, amen, seed that is sown into the ministry that allows us to continue, amen, to do the work of the Lord here, amen, in the city of Lithia Springs and all around the world. It is your giving that allows us to keep going, amen. And we're thankful for those of you that give consistently, amen, even those of you that may be giving for the first time, we bless God, amen, for you, amen. If you don't mind, put your hands together one more time. It's not a bad day. Amen. 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 We thank God. Amen. For who he is. I pray that this word has blessed you. Amen. That is what you needed for today. Not only today, but this word will carry you. Amen. For the rest of your life. I really believe that it will carry you 
for the rest of your days. Amen. Listen, we'll be back here in our uh, virtual sanctuary on Wednesday. The Lord says the same at 7.30 p.m. Facebook Live and YouTube Live at 7.30 on Wednesday uh, for Life Empowerment Wednesday as we spend a few moments together in prayer and the Word or wherever, wherever God leads us on Wednesday. Amen. So come join us on Wednesday. Invite somebody to tap in with us on Wednesday. And then the Lord says the same. We'll be back here at 1 o'clock p.m. Amen. For one worship right here at 6576 Hill Street, Lithia Springs, Georgia. And we'll also be in our virtual space for our virtual uh, family. Amen. I bless the Lord for you. Those of you that are online, that are here with us every single week. We don't take it for granted that you are with us every single week. There are so many options online. Amen. That you join us every single week. And then for those that don't join us live, but then there are hundreds that join us. Amen. During the course of the week, we bless God for you and we pray, we're praying for you, amen, and that God will do in you everything that uh, he wants to do in you and that you will receive the blessing and the harvest that comes from your faithfulness, amen, unto God, amen. Listen, before we leave today, we just want to say, amen, happy birthday to Elder Cynthia Starger, who celebrated her birthday on Friday, amen. We praise God for your life. She is a blessing, amen, to the house. There are so many people that play integral parts in different aspects of the ministry. And so those of you that watch online consistently, uh, Elder C is the person that has been working diligently with our media ministry and making sure that when you click on on Wednesdays, when you click on, on Sundays, amen, that we're here, amen, her and Elder Harnisha, but they work very well to make sure that we have quality, amen, and that you're able to hear and see what thus said the Lord every week. So we just bless God for her life, amen, and many, 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 many more, amen, and many blessings, and we're looking forward to a time of celebration soon, amen, when you reach that next mark, Soon, the end of the year, the end of the year, we're going to celebrate some more. Amen. But we're so thankful for you. We're thankful for your life and what you have deposited into this ministry. Amen. We love you and we love the God in you. Come on, can we bless Elder C? Bless the Lord for Elder C. Amen. Y'all know how we do it. You got a little, you know, holy handshake for it. Y'all can do that when you walk out the door. God bless you. Amen. We can stand and get ready to leave. God, we're thankful for today. We're thankful for what our eyes have seen and for what our ears have heard. Be with us as we leave this place, but never leave your presence. Be with us. Let your spirit rest rule and abide with us now and forever. God, be with us as we go throughout this week, as we travel on the highways, as we go into our workplaces, as we go to school, as our children go to school. Be protection for us everywhere, that as we're in the grocery store, and wherever we are, that you would cause your angels to encamp around about us and keep us. God, keep us from accident. Keep us from hurt, harm, and danger. Let no fires break out or no thieves break in. But God, keep us. And God, we will give you all the glory and the praise every day. God, thank you for making us a masterpiece. And as we go through this week, we'll keep proclaiming it that we are a masterpiece. So God, we're thankful that this week will be a, a week of miracles, signs, and wonders for our house. That we shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So God, keep us until we come together at the appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Go in peace. Hallelujah.